so let me start. Uh, yeah, so so today I'm going to talk about smart porters, and I hope you'll enjoy the topic. Uh, this is not a state of the art uh, uh, C++, not the newest uh, version. Still, I think there are some very interesting things that need to be considered and uh, sometimes are overlooked, even by uh, an experienced developers. So I hope you'll enjoy the talk. Thank you. Okay, so let me start with who am I? I'm an embedded developer working at SolarEdge. Uh, by the way, SolarEdge just entered S&P 500 uh, this week, which is great. Uh, I'm a core CPP user group organizer, uh, one of the organizers. This is a user group in Israel. I'm also an ISO CPP director, uh, SG9, uh, which is the range of study group chair, LEWG co-chair. Uh, this is the library revolution group and uh, Israel NB chair. Uh, I participate in ISO meeting. I teach C++. I sometimes publish C++ papers and articles. And I think it's safe to say that I'm really into C++. So let's start. So today, uh, we're going to talk about the ownership model of C++. The syntax and design of smart pointers. How to successfully use smart pointers uh, with library code and what the future holds. So sometimes it uh, seems like, uh, for, for ownership of course, sometimes it seems like uh, this topic is, is off the table. So I've entered this slide as well. Uh, this is a, a, a Bjarne's talk from the last uh, CPPCon 2021. It's not published on YouTube yet. And the talk is about type and resource safety in more than C++. And I was really excited to see this slide talks about ownership rules. Uh, I think I think that it means a lot that the creator of C++ uh, is talking about a topic that looks like it's been already handled, but is still actually have open op open ends and open topics in it. So, um, yeah, so I think it, this topic is going to be uh, changed and modified in the, co in the coming years. And I, of course, recommend you to uh, go and watch the talk once it's uh, published. So what does ownership mean? Uh, ownership usually refers to management of object memory. Usually when people talk about ownership, talk about uh, memory and lifetime. And I, I think you can uh, address ownership in, in multiple levels. You can address the value, you can address uh, the pointer level, so this would be clearly in dynamic allocation, and uh, proxy, which is a wrapper. But also, uh, when I address ownership in this talk, I also address, uh, other than the memory, I also address the value. So I, would, uh, I wanna give you an example of what I mean by that. Um, owner of an object can update the data. So let's say I have uh, an int represents a month and the int is from zero to 11. So I could change the value from zero to one and uh, from January to February, actually, uh, this is like representing uh, the month. Um, I could also valid invalidate or move the data. And it doesn't mean that I have to uh, erase the object. So if I insert 14 in my in my object, that already means that this object that used to be um, a month that used to represent month is no longer valid. So each ability have different effect on your program, and I think this is something. Uh, generally, the ownership of of your object is something that needs to be considered when you design your program. So smart pointers uh, are basically uh, created to help us manage this ownership better. Um, clearly, uh, C++ have a lot of abilities and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a, a very rich language. And uh, one of the things that we can do with it is uh, manage dynamic uh, memory. But uh, when we do allocate the memory uh, uh, straightforward, we sometimes lack a few of the ownership topics that I've just mentioned. So smart pointers are really helping us create the ownership model in our program. 
And I would say they help bridge the gap between manually managed memory and automatically managed memory. I'll give an example to that. So uh, first, I want to just emphasize those two points that are clearly uh, probably being known by, by a lot of you, but I still want to have uh, just uh, to go over them to, to emphasize. So compile time is what we know about the program when it constructed. Runtime is what we know about the program when it runs. So if you look at compiled languages, for example, I have an IDE, I write code, sometimes I uh, can import or include the library, and then the code goes to the compiler, I get an executable, and the executable is, not, is, is now being transferred into the target machine, usually. Uh, it's, not, it's not necessarily running on the same machine where it's constructed. And when the program runs, it can ask for additional memory from the OS, for example. On interrupted languages, like Python, for example, I write my code, I import library, and then we pass the, the, the outcome to uh, the target machine. But in order to run the program, we also need to have a manager that will manage our private, our, our heap, usually been uh, allocated by the manager. So this is, uh, once the program asks for memory, it doesn't go directly to the operation system, uh, it goes through the manager. And, and I think that in some way, smart pointers help us go from this to this. So we're going to talk about unique pointer, shared pointer, weak pointer, uh, which, are, which are the three uh, main, main uh, um, ownership uh, model uh, uh, primitives, I, I would call it. But there's still uh, a lot of other things that we're going to see, uh, and, and I'm going to represent a few more from the standard library. So let's start with how does this help us? We have a simple program. Uh, we allocate memory for this int, and in case we uh, return here, we get a memory leak. So again, I'm sure uh, all of you are already familiar with that. When we use smart pointer, uh, we create an ownership model for the allocated memory. So in a way, we uh, transfer the uh, responsibility for this object to uh, uh, something that is not in part is not part of the code that's written uh, in the program. It's not part of the code written in this level, but it's part of a code that's written in a different level. So we basically um, uh, take this part of managing the memory and put it in a different code, which I think is a great design um, other, than, other than just uh, taking care of the memory. So now we have allocation and we have something that guards our memory. Of course, when we return, we don't get the memory leak. And we can also have this uh, uh, the same time by using uh, make unique uh, and make shared uh, factory functions from the standard library. And later I'm going to show you why they also have other uh, benefits. And of course we can uh, uh, treat the memory just like we do for uh, allocation. We can catch uh, the um, exception. And one more thing that I want to show you about uh, one advantage of using uh, make unique is here. Let's say I, uh, I use a unique pointer to wrap my allocation. So, and, and I, I do that twice and I call a function with those objects. So here I will get an unsafe behavior because let's say I allocated this uh, int and then uh, I, I, uh, I call this line, and the compiler could actually uh, allocate and then move to the second allocation. But now, if the second allocation fail, we, have, uh, we can have a memory leak because it's still not being wrapped by the unique pointer. On the other hand, in the second example, we do the two things at once. So once I allocated the memory, I'm already, uh, I'm already uh, sure that this is going to work as intended. And then even if second one fails, the first one is already safe. So this is uh, another reason so that to use the facilities that the standard library gives us in this case. 
So let's talk about let's talk about unique pointer uh, and single owner model. Uh, we once we uh, allocate a unique uh, something and wrap it with unique pointer, we actually uh, declare to to the program to other developers uh, that read the code, uh, and in the, we insert into the design a single owner uh, of of this uh, facility. So. Uh, of course, you can use uh, auto, and if I try to take the ownership of the resource, I'll get an error, clearly. That's why I, I need to move the resource uh, to the uh, second uh, unique pointer. And trying to access something that I've already taken is undefined behavior. So uh i i want to emphasize this principle that you're going to see um uh, through the presentation and uh even though a lot of uh, there's a common uh, recommendation to treat uh, smart pointers just like uh, regular pointers which makes sense you still need to remember that the wrapper is not the object and it goes into uh, nice initials uh, twin two uh, because it is actually a twin to the object. It's, it's not the object itself. And uh, sometimes uh, bugs can come up from assuming that this is the same thing. So you always have to uh, keep that in mind as well. And because it's not the same thing, there's a API that allows you to uh, do, to only uh, address one of those, uh, the wrapper and the object separately. So. Uh, release, for example, will return the pointer and termin up, terminate ownership. So you'll keep the resource, but you terminate the owner. And reset will uh, terminate the resource, but uh, keep the owner alive, actually replace the ownership. So I think it's an interesting uh, thing to, to keep in mind that we can have actually uh, different behaviors for this uh, the, this thing that is actually um, being constructed from two two different uh, parts. Uh, so of course, unique pointer can also be used uh, for arrays, and you can um, uh, can have uh, a containers of unique pointer, and if you want to have uh, a range uh, allocated uh, unique pointer of uh, a vector of unique pointers, then you have to use uh, make move iterator uh, and take the, uh, you first have to allocate the array and then you have to use make move iterator to uh, in, initiate your object. And you use initialization list syntax. And you can also have a unique pointer of C style arrays. So uh, you can uh, call make unique and have a uh, a C style array wrapped in your pointer. Um, so another thing that uh, that is uh, uh, relatively new and only entered in C plus plus twenty is a function called make unique for override. Sometimes, uh, especially when we care about performance, we don't want to have uh, the the creation of of uh, an object such that we do in the first line. Is also uh, is also the instan uh, the instantiation also have initialization, but uh, occasionally we wanna avoid that, especially if the uh, array is is a large one, and we can do that by calling this function that avoids the initialization. And last thing is that we can also have a unique pointer of a container, so. Uh, we can have uh, a unique pointer of a vector, so uh, notice the difference. And of course, what we say when we do something like that is that we can't uh, copy our resource, which is now the vector. So that's also a way to, uh, to, to, to tell the other developers our intention. And this is exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, we get the ability to uh, forbid from copying. But what about performance? So we have this uh, addition and we wanna and wanna use it in our program, but if we really care about performance, like we do in embedded systems occasionally, uh, 
is this cost us? So let look, let's look at the unique pointer from the standard library. So um, this uh, in, in unique pointer uh, from from uh, lib uh, std C++ of, of GCC, you have uh, it's a header um, a facility. It's a header only, which already tells you that this is a compile time thing. You have a part that is responsible for a single object, and you have a part that implements a, a unique pointer for array of objects with runtime length. We'll go deeper into the first part, but I really recommend you to go and look at the code, uh, the link that I've uh, posted here yourself. I think it's really interesting uh, and helpful to look at uh, a standard library implementation code. So the first part uh, is actually quite what we would expect from, from this kind of a facility. So uh, we already mentioned that we can uh, move uh, an we can, sorry, copy or uh, uh, call uh, operator equal. And this is exactly what we get here. So we have unique pointer class. It have a data member that actually uh, inherits from unique pointer implementation as uh, usually things uh, in libraries do. You usually hide some of the implementation in a, a different uh, structure with this, uh, with this, uh, mark and then uh, this uh, holds our uh, our type uh, pointer and also the liter uh, point, the liter uh, type that I'll address later now you have uh, of course the uh, the object itself and you have a constructor the constructor actually gets the uh, type of the pointer and holds it in in this data type that we saw and as I mentioned, uh, deleted uh, copy constructor and operator and operator equal, and default um, move uh, constructor of move assignment. So that actually uh, makes a lot of sense, and as we'd probably expect from this type of a uh, facility. And of course, you have uh, the structure and the other uh, the other AP uh, functions that I've mentioned before. Uh, to allow additional uh, additional things that you can do with unique pointer. So going back to ownership, let's define the ownership characteristics. So as I mentioned, uh, I think that there's more to ownership than just the, keeping the the allocation and the memory. And I, the, in C++, there's uh, different ways to affect the ownership of the objects in your program. So the first one is by moving an object. So once you move an object, you affect the ownership. The second one is passing an object as a function param, because we, all, uh, we know that uh, once we pass an object to a function, you get a copy. Uh, of course, with reference, it's different. but uh, once you do such an action, you have to define how would you like to address the ownership. And of course, returning an object from a function, which again creates a copy in most cases, we're going to see later uh, how is this affecting our ownership. So let's start with the first event, passing an object, uh, sorry, the second one, passing uh, an object as a function param. So I have here a library of uh, say a devices library and it knows it's actually uh, expose facilities to print a device so I uh, can pass a unique pointer of the device dev and print information on the device let's uh, say in this example it's a serial number of the device I could also expose a function that takes a device by pointer and do the same thing, but uh, again, uh, don't focus on the on the implementation. The, uh, I could clearly in this implementation, I could uh, uh, use a template function or something of this sort. But I intentionally made those functions different. And the point is that we probably want to do different things for different types. And of course, uh, overload uh, will call the proper function as needed. So now I have a main function. And I want to call my print function. Um, but uh, first, I 
uh, asked from the user to give me the unique pointer of the device, and then I call the function. Of course, as I mentioned, we are uh, creating an ownership event, and uh, as we've already seen, unique pointer can't actually uh, be copied, so we'll get an error. So there's two ways to solve this. The first way is that the user code will give ownership to the library. So we'll call move instead of just calling with the device. And the second option is that ownership remains in the user code and we pass it by reference. We change the signature of the function. Now, I will go back to that uh, later, but uh, currently I'm just addressing that from the technical perspective. Later, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about how is this uh, be, should be handled in a manner of, uh, of, of design perspective. This, the third ownership event, returning uh, from uh, an object from a function. So now we have our devices library and we have a function called get device. And now we already improved our uh, API. And let's say I have uh, a new device that uh, could actually uh, behave, uh, create a, a unique pointer underneath and returns a device and a new device. Uh, it's a different function that create the device, but what it does, it's just uh, returning the mechanic from, from the function. So the question now is what's gonna happen? So let's say I create a device and then I call the first function, which basically needs to uh, return the, this device. And on the first case, we'll get an error because we use deleted copy constructor. So again, as I mentioned, we have our ownership event and we try to uh, copy, but this time it's not because we pass the object to the function, but because we return it from the function. The second option, even though we would expect this to, to happen, we actually get uh, 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 the code actually compiles and runs. Now, what, what happens here is that we get an optimization that's called uh, a named return value optimization, and it's mandatory starting from C++ 17. And uh, we create an object inside the function and we return it. But in behind the scene, the compiler is uh, actually uh, discarding this, this line and just returns an object. Uh, it's actually not returning, uh, it's, again, it's an implementation detail, but it's not returning the object, it's actually returning the parameters to create the object and the object is just uh, created here. So this is the named return value optimization that actually uh, changed the ownership model of our code, even though we're doing something that shouldn't have uh, been compiled uh, we still get a behavior that is different. And the last one is doing uh, something very similar called return value optimization. And here again, uh, we have an optimization that uh, prevents us from copying this and actually works not as you'd expect from this, uh, from this uh, code. So what I'm trying to say here is that it's important for us to address the memory uh, model in, and, and the ownership model in our program. Sometimes the code will not will compile and will think that everything works uh, perfectly well, but uh, actually what happens here is, is optimizations and, and changes the compiler is doing. And it's okay to rely on that, but you have to take this under consideration when you, when you write your program and uh, make sure that you're writing it correctly, even, even when you have ownership events. And again, the way to address that would be to return and move the um, resource out of the function or uh, to actually pass this uh, as a reference and return as a reference. I'm addressing the first function here. And you also need to count on the uh, user to uh, use, to, to uh, take it back by reference. But I've mentioned before, we're gonna go back to that uh, because I wouldn't, uh, th this is not a real example of library code that I'd expect to see in, in, in real code bases. 
And I uh, wrote this uh, code like this to emphasize the technical aspects. But I do want to have, I, I do want to show you a bit in, in, uh, in next slides how to actually uh, write user code that use smart pointers uh, correctly with the library. Uh, okay, I can see there's a question by Jens. Uh, is there any real difference between accepting a unique pointer function parameter by value or as an R value? So, uh, I, I, okay, so basically when you accept it by R value, you, you create it in the call and you don't, and then, and then it could actually uh, work uh, differently, but, I, I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to see code that that calls a function by R value, in any case, because uh, you get something that is like so. Usually, it probably not compile it or probably won't do what you want it to do, uh, because the because of the meaning of doing something like that. The meaning of doing something like that is creating an object when you call the function, and then getting back the object. Uh, from from the function, so I, I'm not sure if that's what we would uh, want to have in in code. So again, the point is uh, make sure that the code actually expresses your intention. Okay, so uh, again, a shared pointer creates multiple owner uh, model, as I've mentioned before. And uh, again, we need to remember that this is not, the wrapper is not the object. And it's, man it's managed by reference count. So uh, again, this uh, talk was uh, originally uh, written for back to basic track. So I don't want to go uh, into the details of reference count. I would assume that most people in this group already know this, but there is one, one sentence that I want to emphasize. And that is uh, when you use make shared uh, library functions, you can uh, also get an optimization for the allocation because as you've seen, uh, the object of shared pointer is actually uh, created by two, it have two parts. The first part is the manager part, which is uh, the part that holds the reference count and have its own memory allocation. And the second part is the object that you're holding. And they don't have to be, they usually allocated uh, this way, uh, one after the other, but they don't have to be uh, allocated this way. And the uh, first manager part actually have, uh, holds the address to the object. So once you use uh, make shared, you can also get optimization of allocating both of them at the same time. And that's just another reason to use uh, facility, uh, library facilities. Okay. So uh, I want to show you a common pitfall, and this is the last slide before we'll go into how to really use that. But I'm showing here a common mistake for, for people that are uh, relatively new to the language, and it actually makes a lot of sense, though. Uh, so let's say I want to have uh, some kind of a device. So I, I create a device here, a new device, and I'm going to wrap it with shared pointer. So I implemented a function that's called wrap with shared, and I give it a device and I expect to get back a shared pointer. So I created a device, and then I called wrap with shared and actually got what I expected because uh, now I get the wrapper wrapping the device that I've passed. But now uh, when I call the second time to the, to the wrap with shared, I get a different object than the one that I've intended to. And, and the manager that manages uh, the, the same uh, resource, it holds the address of the same resource, ha have a different ref count. And this is a problem that, that uh, basically uh, you could uh, easily miss because as I mentioned, the wrapper is not the object. So to bypass that, we're going to see in uh, the next slide how to actually uh, have something uh, that is very similar to this implementation, but correctly. 
So before that, I just want to uh, talk about weak pointer very briefly. Uh, weak pointer is non-owner model. So it's used to keep handle to shared pointer without claiming ownership so that we can uh, prevent uh, um, a circular um, point, pointing uh, and, and, and uh, to be able to uh, free the memory for uh, objects that uh, keep pointers to each other. And I'm not going to show it here because uh, this is really the most common use case and you can find it very easily. But I just want to go over a few of the functionalities of uh, weak pointer so you can get the reference count. You can have, uh, you can ask if your weak pointer is expired and you can also lock it in order to return a handle uh, with ownership. And I just want to show a very uh, short example but this example is, is wrong. And again, I'm going to uh, talk about this in the next slide. So uh, we have a weak pointer here. And I want to check if the weak pointer is expired. And if not, I want to take uh, uh, a pointer to the, uh, actually what created here is a shared pointer. And I, I want to uh, create a shared pointer uh, of this weak pointer with, by calling lock. The problem here, is that once I end this uh, condition, uh, I can't be I can't be sure that I'm still in the same state once I enter the scope. So we're gonna see it a bit later. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, smart pointers are uh, are a way to manage uh, memory allocation on the heap, and of course, uh, once we go to a multi-threaded program. We can have uh, multiple stack uh, objects that all points to the same heap. And uh, we can also have multiple stacks because, uh, because of uh, uh, multi-threaded uh, implementations. And the example that I've shown before, if we look at, at, uh, uh, at the example from multi-threaded perspective, and it not that I'm saying that everyone needs to take this under consideration because not everyone are working in multi-threaded environment. But if, if we uh, look at the code from the design perspective, then uh, once we uh, get here with a single thread, we check if the condition expires. And then uh, let's say we got a contact switch. So we move to the second thread. And this thread already knows that it can take the resource. and uh, assuming some other thread have already uh, got, uh, got rid of our uh, shared pointer, we'll go back to the thread that originally called the condition and we'll do something that actually uh, we didn't intend to. So the problem here is that we're not going to fail. What we're actually going to have is a, a, a creation of a, a null shared pointer, an empty shared pointer. In, in case of this have been uh, deleted. And this is uh, not what we intended. So uh, my point here is that when we do use uh, smart pointers in multi-threaded environment, we should take such things under consideration. Now, I'm not going to go into that topic. Uh, uh, so, so one thing to do would be uh, to call uh, the lock which actually checks and retrieve the object. But uh, again, it doesn't mean that this is uh, the final code. Uh, we need to make sure that we use them right. And, uh, and since this is a topic for a complete uh, different uh, session, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go into that in too many details. But, but, that's, but, that's, uh, uh, but that's something to consider when you do use uh, smart pointers. Um, I just want to emphasize here as well that this is a, another reason to make sure that you use standard library uh, facilities like MakeShared and like Lock that actually does two things. Uh, they usually do things better. OK, so what I've uh, been uh, advocate, advocating is to consider the ownership of your library code. So now we're going to see examples of how to actually use smart pointers with library code or uh, better ways to do so. 
to avoid the problems that we've seen in, a, in the previous slides, uh, the technical issues. So I have my uh, device class here, and it have a, a serial number and a constructor, and it keeps the serial number. And I have a, a function called add model to this device. So let's say I want to change the serial number somehow. In this example, just add a character to the end so that I can know this is a, a device model A. So I create my device and then I call add model function. And that's great. But what happens if I uh, change at some point the library code to use a shared pointer? And the user have just created a unique pointer because this is uh, the API that I've exposed so far. Now we have something that doesn't work and we didn't intend this to, to happen. So a better way to uh, react with library code from the user perspective would be to have a, a function called getDevice, just the one that here uh, is an example for it. And the user will pass the data that is relevant for this uh, object that you want to create, but it will get back an object uh, calling auto. And in this example, even uh, this is uh, something that's called a factory method. And in this example, even if I do uh, change the type to a shared pointer, the user doesn't have to be exposed to that. So this would be the better way uh, to address uh, smart pointers in library code. Uh, okay, there's a question about slide 21. I prefer not to go back to, uh, to it now. I'll go back to that at the end. And another uh, facility uh, uh, that is very useful from the standard library to do something that we already saw before in the slides and we know that we should be avoiding um, is uh, enable shared from this. So we saw previously the make a shared pointer function that we already understood why it doesn't work. And here we have a facility that is provided by the standard library to do something very similar, but actually uh, works perfect. So we have a device here and uh, we, uh, and, and we want to, uh, use the function get device as we already saw in the previous slide so we basically use a library implemented function uh, factory function to have the object that we want and the device implementation uh, is uh, inheriting uh, from enable shown from this um, which is which is a facility from the standard library as i mentioned and it's a template uh, uh, base uh, class, so it have to have the type uh, of the of the class that it uh, wants to to create. And we have uh, here, as I mentioned, it's a template class, and we have uh, the constructor being um, hidden uh, so that the user wouldn't be able to create it directly. Instead, we expose uh, create device static function and uh, an additional function called get handler. So first of all, we'll create the device uh, instead of instead of uh, previous example uh, with with our static function. And then we'll be able to get handler handle for the device and the get handle will return us a shared pointer. Now, assuming we'll take the same uh, object dev one, we would be able to call this function just like we were trying to do with make shared, but uh, but successfully. So this is uh, a utility the standard library is uh, providing and is also allowing us to have a better uh, API and infrastructure. Okay, so I, I'll go back to slide 21 now because uh, we just passed to a different topic. Shouldn't this function accept a weak PTR? Okay. Okay, so if you're referring to this function, the idea is 
Uh, oh, right. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think that could be a weak PTR instead. Yes, you're right. Uh, sorry for the confusion. Thank you. Okay, let's jump forward. Okay, so uh, again, just a few things that to consider when uh, using smart pointers with library code and user code. So uh, once you pass an object to a library, you should consider ownership uh, in your in your API. So uh, there's another thing that you could uh, do instead of using the factory methods that, that we did before, which is uh, create this manager and and give all the and, and, and delegate all the different uh, um, usability to this manager. So this is, uh, again, it's not a solution that fits all cases. And we've seen, we've seen multiple ways to, to address ownership, but this is a solution. So you could also have uh, a manager and the, and the idea is that this manager exposes the API and the user only gives it, uh, in this example, the serial number of the device, only gives it the the, the uh, data that is uh, that needs to be considered, and all of the management uh, and allocation and and ownership of the objects is something that is being managed inside this um, manager object. So that's another solution. So RAI, uh, as you've already seen, we're addressing uh, quite a lot uh, of that in the presentation. And um, we've seen uh, an attempt to, to manage ownership of objects. And I just want to show here uh, another way to do it using uh, unique PTR, uh, the litter object that we've seen before. So if you, if you recall, we've seen in the uh, library implementation of unique PTR, the, uh, the litter. Uh, if you don't pass the deleter, it will be default uh, uh, the leader for from the standard library, but if you if you want, you can use it in order to manage your ownership of, of objects. So, um, okay, so we have here a wrapper, and uh, I uh, generate uh, in this example. I want to show an example of generating uh, some kind of a serial number from. A, a type of a pool or something other other code that, that have its uh, its facilities and usability, and I want to have a wrapper uh, on on this uh, serial number that is being allocated. And once we reach the end of the function, I want to uh, get this uh, back to the to the thing that's created it. So. I can get my uh, serial number from this uh, generator pool thing and wrap it with uh, with a unique PTR. And once this uh, unique PTR is uh, is uh, reaching the end of scope, the fu the function that would be called is uh, the release uh, sn function, uh, which is actually a functor. So uh, the operator will be called, and instead of uh, deleting the memory, we'll do something for, for example, erase this uh, serial number from the database. So we could manage the ownership of objects not only in the memory uh, sense. Here, we don't free memory. We write to a database, and then we release from a database or erase from a database, which is a different kind of ownership in our program. And a very useful uh, tool to do that would be use the uh, custom deleter of Unique PTR. So again, I think it's very interesting. And the standard library gives us a lot of tools uh, not, not always being used. OK, so very briefly, I'll go over a few of the standard library classes using uh, RAI. And you can, uh, of course, uh, see here a string and vector uh, containers, uh, JThread, which actually rejoins the thread on destructor, 
uh, unique lock and shared lock, uh, which are uh, exclusive, ex exclusive mutex wrapper and shared mutex wrappers, and LockGuard, which uh, manage the ownership of mutex in a scope. Scoped lock is actually a, 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 is a more advanced facility that allows us to manage the ownership of multiple mutexes. Uh, for example, if I want to lock more than one mutex, but I don't want to avoid rest condition, there's a, there's a, a code behind the scene of this facility to make sure that I don't get a, a rest condition and a deadlock on, a, on, on my mutexes. And uh, experimental namespace also contains scope, uh, scope exit, which is a general purpose uh, scope guard. I think it's uh, something that we probably need to go into the standard very soon. And one more thing that I've mentioned and I've shown, uh, I don't know if you've uh, noticed in the first slide, um, Bjarne in his talk is mentioning uh, J JSL, uh, GSL, which is a guideline support library. Uh, this is a library that is currently only implemented in MSVC, but it's a library being written by the uh, C++ uh, core guidelines uh, that, uh, that appears in the uh, ISO CPP website. So I think uh, it's very interesting uh, to go, even for experienced developers, to go and go over this, uh, this uh, library uh, implementation. There is some uh, very interesting uh, utilities there. One of them is, uh, JSL is for the uh, initials, uh, one of them is owner. It's a wrapper that actually uh, permits multiple uh, accesses to, to an object once we know its ownership. And this is really, uh, I think, connected to uh, the main topic of this talk. To consider the ownership of our objects is not only to consider uh, the dynamic allocation or the memory ownership, it's also to consider who and, and in what part of the program we can access and change the values of, of the object and the data. And as I mentioned, I think, I think there's a lot to be uh, still be done in this, in this field. So a few proposals that suggest changes related to ownership model. So mixed comparisons for smart pointers is basically um, allowing uh, the, the comparison of, of uh, smart pointers with our regular pointers, etc. It's still not in the standard. Uh, it's been uh, discussed. Uh, I think it's interesting because it uh, bridged the gap between smart pointers and pointers in our, in our uh, code and will allow better use of smart pointers. There's a um, proposal called Pointer Lifetime in Zap. Uh, this proposal is also very interesting uh, to my, uh, uh, I think it, it will really open uh, a lot of utilities for C++. So, for example, if we look at garbage collector, uh, the way garbage collector works is that you uh, basically allocate uh, memory uh, throughout the program, but you don't uh, free it you run this, uh, this logic that actually uh, goes and clean all the memory that have been allocated. Now, in order to do this smart management of our resources, one thing that the garbage collector can do is mark the, uh, the pointers once freed with uh, additional uh, data. And this proposal is not exactly uh, uh, proposing that, but actually goes in this direction and I think it's very interesting to allow those those things in the uh, library implementation, and and uh, of course that could affect the library implementation, and will open the 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 window for different uh, smarter um, ownership managements in our program. And additional proposal is called what is a view or the. Uh, uh, voted into C++ uh, uh, 23, and uh, it basically basically defines uh, what. Uh, so so I don't know if uh, you're familiar with the ranges library. I hope you are because this is a really great great library, and tries to define uh, the ownership uh, perspectives among other things of of views. 
And views are things that uh, points uh, basically uh, reference to references to uh, ranges. And when you do try to create uh, a view, you have to take under consideration the lifetime of, of your range. So this is, uh, I think it's an interesting proposal trying to uh, improve the, the ownership of views and ranges uh, in the ranges library. And of course, as I mentioned already uh, before, uh, this year's uh, CppCon uh, had a talk by uh, Bjarne uh, Straustrup about type and resource safety in modern C++. This is the name of the talk, and it's also the name of this paper that been uh, published uh, some time ago. And this is one of the reasons I'm, I'm saying that uh, memory uh, ownership and resource management is not something that is already solved in C++ today. And I believe that there are uh, some changes that uh, will occur in the future in this uh, very interesting topic. And yeah, as I mentioned, uh, Bjarne's talk. So uh, to summarize, uh, consider data ownership in your design. Ownership is the window to advanced facilities. Uh, as I mentioned, garbage collector is an example for it. Uh, collecting statistics is another example. And changes are coming. Thank you. That's it. Thank you for giving this great talk. I found it really interesting. Thank Inbox. you. I'm so, glad you, you enjoyed. Yes. Um, 